praises and sing praises. You can sing in the spirit, sing in your understanding and praise our God. He's a faithful God. Let us praise God with our whole being in the name of Jesus. Let's speak in tongues, speak in the spirit. Oh Father, Lord, Sheke de Renda Basata Kanda Reja Daba Sote Ambada Kanda Tanda Daba Kaba de Reti Kabada Ambika Daba Senga de Bela Chatata. Oh, we praise you, God. You are worthy to be praised. There is no one. My whole being praises you. My whole heart worship you, O God. Under the bells of Tabadi, the tongues of Tabade. In the Basada, the Sagada, the Sikada, the Yabase, the Rebese, and the Badassi, the Lazo, the Tara, and the trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help. Hmm. Can we just lift our voices and once again acknowledge our God and say, Father, we do not put our trust in any man. We put our trust in you. And because we have put our trust in you, we are here saying thank you for being faithful. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you because you are a faithful God. We do not put our trust in man. That is why we are singing to you. That is why we have come to you, O God. We have come to you lifting our voices in praise. Lifting our voices in one accord, O Lord. Because our trust is in you. Jehovah Jireh, our trust is in you. We are here to say thank you. We are here lifting our voices, O God. Sing it to your holy name. We acknowledge all that you have done, O oh God. We acknowledge all that you have been to us, O oh God. When we needed you as Jehovah Shammah, you were there. As Jehovah is, you were there. As Jehovah El Shaddai, Elohim, anyhow we needed you. And they read about Sira Shatada. Thank you, Jesus. Let us thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are giving praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Monday um, prayers, where we pray breakthrough prayers. And so, Today, I believe God is taking us to Ephesians chapter 6, the, talking about the armor, talking about how we should be dressed as Christians. Can we go there? Ephesians 6, verse, start from verse, um, from verse 10. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. In the power of his mind. That's where the power, when we see power, we're talking, you know it's the Holy Spirit. Verse 11 now says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We, we, we don't have an option because when we go to verse 12, it tells us why we need to do that. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor, take up the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, and having done all to stand, verse 14, stand therefore, having built your ways with truth. So the first thing we are looking at and we're going to start praying about is truth, truth on our ways. What is truth? When we, when we see truth, when we see truth in the Bible, what is truth? In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus himself said it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. And then we know that the truth, Jesus is also the word of God, made flesh and lived amongst men when he came. So the Bible, the word of God, we can't do without it. So our prayer now, what we're going to do is we're going to pray in the spirit for two minutes. And as we're praying, the Holy Spirit will remind us of scriptures that we have had in our being. That's where we see um, reading the scriptures is important, but the Holy Spirit will speak to us and then we will use those scriptures and pray and say, Lord, let your truth about this situation. You know where it's aching. You know what you need in your business. You know where you want the breakthrough to be in your family. And so as, the, as, the only, as you receive insight, as we pray in tongues, you speak and declare and see it done in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, we did. Let's build up, build up, build up. with God. 
people that will offer ourselves as a living sacrifice every day, every second. It really, in fact, every second by the second. That is where the place of prayer comes in, where we need to have an altar every time. We are always connected to God. And then another thing is in John chapter 14, verse 15. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, that if we love him, we will obey his command. So God first loved us, and that's how we are even able to love him. And so there's there, there's there's a place of of us coming to understand that because I love God, I won't even want to look at sin. I won't even entertain any kind of sin. I don't want to hurt Jesus. I don't want to make him sad. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, Praise yeah. the Lord. And also, uh, we also come to understand that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because sometimes, maybe when we make we make a mistake, and then the devil wants to guilt trip us and say, "Oh, you did this. You can't. You can't. You can't um, rise up to your father anymore." And then we are we are we are and, and we are thrown down. We are not able to rise up in prayer. But what's the Bible telling us in Second Corinthians? Um, 5 verse 21 it says that we are the righteousness of god in who in christ jesus jesus has done it for us and then he makes us understand that if we sin once we confess he's faithful and just to forgive us it's done it's over praise the lord so what, what are we going to pray now we're going to say thank you father Thank you for making me your righteousness in Christ Jesus. Because it's not by my own power. If I want to do it by my own power, oh, it's as a filthy rag before you. So we are praying. We are saying thank you, Father, for sending your son and making me your righteousness. So when you look at me, when you look at me, you don't see any other thing. You see your righteousness. And then we are also going to pray that, Father, help me to love you more. Because when, we, when you are in love with Jesus, when you are in love with the Holy Spirit, oh, you run away from sin. Can we take that prayer at that point? In the name of Jesus. First of all, we are thanking him, and then we are praying to help. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. That Father, I am not loving by my own power. I am not looking right by my own righteousness. I am not loving by my own righteousness. I am not loving by my own righteousness. I am not loving by my own righteousness. Anything that is standing in the way of me loving you, take it away. Anything that is making me love you less.
that Jesus came, he died, and he rose again. Hallelujah. And then that gospel of peace is bringing men, drawing men to God. It's God that draws men, but we are channels. So this verse says preparation. Preparation. How prepared are we? How prepared are we? Are we in the, the first thing on our mind? Is it our business or, or God? Um, who am I going to bring to you today? I think the co-founder, Mr. Damola, said something that but in the age we are now, when you carry your, when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? You just pick up your phone. So he divides the, the method. He, he, he wrote something on his phone. So the first thing he sees, I, I may not be correct, but that, that first is a write-up that directs his mind immediately to say, oh, this is my goal for today. Father, show me, lead me to who I'm going, to the soul I'm going to bring to you. Praise the Lord. So can we pray that Lord, this our business, not the word, our business, because it's not my business. It is our business. You and God, you own that business. Say, Father, this is our business. Show me strategies on how to draw men to you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that I will be prepared at any time, anywhere, in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that Father show me strategies in this our business, whatever business you are in, that Lord, I will know how to draw men to you in the name of Jesus. Always ready, always ready to be reaching out the gospel of peace. In the name of Jesus. in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, Amen. with these prayer points, we will still go back home. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is saying this night, great your prayers are 12 midnight or 12 mid, uh, mid time, midday in the in the daytime. Remember Psalm 91. Makes us understand I was flying the day and the night. So quickly, let's look at the last, the last one for today. The, and that is the shield of faith. Praise the Lord. Mm, amen. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will quench the very darts of the devil. And now, the shield of faith now, the Bible says above all, that is where, <laughs> that is where the devil attacks. So two ways, two ways we are going to do that is number one, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. We build our faith by praying in the Holy Ghost according to Jude 20. So that's what we are going to do. Number two, and as we're praying in the Holy Ghost, we are, and, and maybe you are faced with a problem. You are not thanking God for the problem. You are not saying, oh God, thank you that my window is broken or that I'm sick. No, you are thanking God for his almightiness. So in that time, you are, you are speaking in tongues. You are magnifying God, and you see that he's bigger than the problem, and then your faith rises. Praise the Lord. The second way right. is by the word of God, by the scriptures. So, for example, we are looking at the healing, the healing anointing this month, right, in the EIC. For example, now, you say you go into the scriptures. That's why the Bible study is very important. Two scriptures that changed my life. I, I used to be very sick as a, as a girl, but I picked up a book by um, Keys to Divine Health, and there were just two scriptures. It says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 17 B, it says, a faithful ambassador is held. Hmm. And then he now links it to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that says what? That says that we are ambassadors of Christ. Hmm. The light bulb 
boom, in my eye. And I pray that you will get that light bulb too. So how, mm. how does that come together? If it says that a faithful ambassador is held and that we are ambassadors of Christ, what does that mean? That means that I am an ambassador of hell. My business is an ambassador of hell. My business is representing you, Jesus. So I cannot be sick. My business cannot be sick. My business cannot be weak. I cannot be weak. Do we understand that? So two things we are going to do now. Madam Anita, I'm sorry. My time is gone, but we'll just pray and that's it. We're going to pray in tongues. And as you're praying in tongues, magnify God. And then you can use these scriptures or any scriptures that come to your mind and declare it. That's how we build our shield of faith. Let us pray. Amen. So we are in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 to 25 it says let us hold fast the let us hold fast the perfection of our faith without waving for he is faithful that promised let's let's read this same passage this same verse in the amplifier it says let us seize and hold tightly the the, the confession of our hope without waving he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. 24 says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assemblies of our, uh, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the you see the day approaching we're going to be praying even now we know that the one that promised us is faithful and very reliable and so when we pray when we come to this altar and pray we are sure of where who we are praying to and we know he's reliable and he's trustworthy so we're going to be praying even now and say lord thank you first of all for answers prayers for the prayers we pray we know that that will be answered and you have to unmute your mic and so verse 24 says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. When you come on the call and you don't unmute your mic and pray, 
you do yourself a disservice, as Mr. Demola will say. When you commute your mic and pray, as other people are hearing the unity in our voice praying, so everybody else will want to unmute and pray. So when you come to, that is another, a way of provoking each other to good works. If that is a way of provoking each other. There are things you do, you might not know if people are looking at you. But there are people that they just come on the call. If they see others are muted, they just mute and don't pray. So when you come on the call, be somebody that provokes another unto good work. I want us to just blast in tongues because we know the one that has called us to pray. He is reliable. He is reliable. So let's Amen. Thank you talking to us in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. I read, it, I'm reading from the five. It says, This book of the Lord shall not be cut from your mouth, but you shall, you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will. And then you will be successful. Please, if there's no way you're unfriendly, mute so they can get the prayer to be raised. I admit, please help us to mute the test. Okay, so the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success, and then you will be successful. My pastor, well, my pastor, while reading this verse, he said, "This God has given us the recipe for success. As we come here to pray for breakthrough for our business, pray for breakthrough for our families, God has given us the recipe in the book of Joshua. He said, "This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth." He said, but you shall read and meditate. You have to read the word and then you meditate on it day and night, day and night. So we're going to be praying even now and say, Lord, give me the grace. Lord, I receive the grace to study your word and meditate on it day and night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Oh Jesus, Okay. <laughs> 
There's a song by Elevation Worship. The song says, Stand, stand still when I'm with you. He said, There's no way I'd rather be than, than with you. Stand, stand still when I'm with you. You know, you can actually just be in the presence of God and you don't care what else is happening out there. And you're just loving his presence and you're just loving holding his word. And that is a grace. And that is what we pray for. That same verse, that same verse says, So that, it says, So that you may be careful that in it. It's not just to study, it's not just to meditate. But there is a grace that comes with that meditation that helps you to do. The Bible said that you may be careful to do. You will do it carefully according to how the word is. So the word mirrors your life. I'm going to be praying even now that Lord, even as we've received the grace to see your word, Lord, we still have some grace. So the word mirrors our life. We are not hearers, we are not just readers of the word, but we are that which we are reading and that which we are meditating upon in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. La 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 la, kara basu ya kara basu kete ne 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 basu ya, kara basu ya kara basu ya, kara basu ya kara basu ya, under the Amen. As, as you read down that same verse, it says, For then you will make your ways prosperous, and then you will have you will be successful. In another verse, you say you will have good success. If you notice what the Bible verse says here, it says, for then you will make your way prosperous. You're the one to make your way prosperous. God has done everything he needs to do. And that is why he's seated on the throne and watching. Jesus has come to do all that he's, he's supposed to do. So he's seated at the right hand side of God and he's watching what would these people do with my sacrifice that I've come to do. So it is unto you when you study the word, you meditate on it and you carefully do what it is written there and then you yourself can now decree good success you can now decree prosperity you can decree whatever it is that you want and it will come to pass so we're going to pray now you're going to open your mouth and decree those things you want those things you want you're going to begin to decree them now lord i decree and declare by the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ by reason of jesus sacrifice on the cross that this happens i have held my business is Right. That money comes. I pay off the debt in the name of Jesus. Begin to decree those things you want to see. You Begin to give your life. Malik, <laughs> <laughs> 
a world, a world that was surrounding a city, the walls were so thick that Rahab's house was built on the rock, that a house was built on the walls. That's how thick the walls is. And now the Holy Spirit is asking, what are you faced with? What is that challenge you are faced with? That is looking like a very thick wall, that is looking impossible in your eyes. We are serving a God of impossibility. So I want you to look at this wall now and begin to speak to this wall. I don't care how thick you are. I don't care where you come from, but I'm going through this wall. In the name of Jesus, my breakthrough is coming. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. <laughs> If we still in the name of Jesus, if we read the story all the way to the end, you know that Joshua. They, they did exactly what God has said. And when they've gone around the, 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 the walls seven times, he told the children of Israel to shout, La Tekabarato, to shout from the depth of their heart. And that is what we're going to be doing even now. We're going to, we're going to prevail in the place of prayer. You're going to just blast in tongues and see that word fall, whatever it is. See that debt being paid, whatever it is, just see it. You have to see it. If you prevail, if you really push, like Mr. Demola will say, for a woman that is about to give birth, when she's in labor, she will, she will groan and she will, she will try all this and she will push. And when you prevail, it travel in place of prayer, you will bring forth your child. So I want you to look at that word and shout the best way you can. Shout, groan in the spirit. Just let that word fall now. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Yes, Lord. 
One of the ways I get notes of victory when I'm praying is I get a song. I get a song by the Spirit, and just now I got a song. It's, it, this is a song. It said, The walls of Jericho fell down flat. The walls of Jericho fell down flat. The children of God were praising the Lord. The walls of Jericho fell down flat. It fell down flat. They are praising their Lord. So begin to praise your God for the walls that fall down flat.
the vision of EIC, oh God. Thank you for more grace, oh God, to push the work forward for your glory in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. We thank you, Abba God, for in mm. Jesus' beautiful, beautiful name we pray. Amen. 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 Victoria, over to you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Halita. And thank you, Madam Mercy. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for the prayer session. Hello, can everyone hear me, please? Yes, we yes. can. Yes, we right. can. Yes, please. Good evening. It's good to have you join BNF meeting today. And um for today's BNF, it's a discussion uh, time. And so with us, please, all the leaders that are on the panelists, kindly turn on your video so that I'll be sure that you are here with us. We have uh, Mr. Yemi Akins, the country leader for Nigeria. We have um, Dr. Michael Nkrumah, the country leader for Ghana. And we have Mr. James Mbinji, the country leader for Kenya. Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, our uh, able leaders. And also, um, Mr. Damola would be joining us. He's on transit, but he will try his best to join us as we progress in the meeting. All right, thank you so much, Sars, for always being available to discuss with us to further make us understand all the different anointings. Okay, sure. so um, let's keep the ball rolling. So this month we are looking at the healing anointing. And so um, Mr. Michael, uh, Dr. Michael Nkrumah, are you there, sir? He was in the meeting, perhaps internet service being um, a bit challenging and so perhaps it's been knocked out of the meeting. Okay, let me take the first question, which says, um, what does healing mean to you? Healing to you, what does it mean? All right, let's take Mr. Yemi first. What does healing mean to you, sir? Oh, thank you very much, um, Victoria. Um, but I think before we can even discuss the healing, because I want us to just streamline it uh, to what I'll call divine healing. So, so divine healing is telling us the source of the healing. Um, there are many sources that you can receive healing, but when we use the word divine, so we're, actually, we're saying that the source of this healing originates from God through the Spirit of God. We impact the life of God into that physical container to bring life into that container. Now, healing is the bread of the children. Uh, I often say to people, I, I live in the UK, born in UK. We have NHS in UK, so I have, I have free free health service in UK. I can enter any hospital in UK and I get free health service. So this is what the Kingdom of the United Kingdom are provided for their citizens. Now, if you're in the kingdom of God, the, 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 the provision of God is that all his children will be in sound health. Now, we're not supposed to be sick, but in case we fall sick, there's provision for healing. And then from healing, our focus is to actually live in divine health. That means your body don't even fall sick at all. The power of God is keeping your body intact. And a very good scripture is, is, is Romans chapter 8, verse 10 to 11. It's the most powerful scripture for any believer to meditate on because it tells you that there's a spirit within you and that spirit gives life, energizes and gives life to your mortal body. So it's telling us that what sustain a believer by faith when we reach that dimension is that the spirit of God gives life to your physical members. So no demons or di diseases can dwell therein. Or for, for people growing up in the Lord, healing is available for every single one of us. And that healing is the provision through the Holy Spirit for us to live in health. So it's available for all the children. So healing is God's provision through the Holy Spirit to impact his life into our physical body. So we can, we can have a healthy body, healthy soul and healthy spirit. Thank you. 
All right, thank you so much, sir. Mr. James, kindly take the same question. What does healing mean to you? Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, and thank you also, Yemi, for really elaborating the divine aspect of it. But uh, my healing from um, the Hebrew word, shalom, which basically means nothing missing and nothing broken. It's wholeness. It's wholeness in terms of as men, we are body, soul, and spirit. So when we are whole, that's what I'll call healing. Uh, complete, uh, what can I say? What does healing mean to you? Being whole, shalom, the shalom of God. Being whole in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. And I'll derive my, my scripture from the book of 3 John, verse 1 to 2, that says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health. So good health, good health is our portion in Christ. And it says, and that all may go well with you. Good health is our portion in Christ. So healing, I'll take it in the three forms, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Good health is part of our spiritual growth. We can't, we can't disentangle and say that uh, uh, I'm prospering spiritually, and yet your body has got issues. They need to go in tandem. So mine is being whole, being whole in the body, in the soul, and in the spirit. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, one time in a school, I learned a teacher asked a child, how do you spell basket? And the child didn't give the proper spelling. So the, the child didn't give the proper spelling. And the, the teacher was angry and like that's not the spelling the child said you said how do i and so i asked you what is healing to you so i can't say you're right i can't say you're wrong but i'm i know definitely know that you gave the right answer to that question and you answer it quite well thank you so much again all right moving on let's take the next question so in what ways have you experienced healing mr james you go first in what ways have you experienced healing? I really had to scratch my head on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let me say uh, the most, uh, the biggest way that I've experienced healing, being born again is emotional, emotional healing. I remember there was a time that uh, I really went through issues in life. And uh, it was as if things would never change. I was, I was ashamed of myself. I had very low self-esteem. Very low self-esteem because of what had gone, what had gone through, until it affected my confidence, even with uh, brethren who were around me. I would always feel inferior to people. But uh, as I read the word, as I prayed, as I forged in, I begin to see Christ in me and the benefits of Christ that are also in me, that now Christ resides in me. And the Spirit of God enabled me Boldness began picking up in me. And uh, little by little, being there ever present, doing covenant time, praying, and asking God for boldness, it even surprised me that uh, at one time I became so bold that I, can, I could even stand before people and do presentations. So, I checked myself and I asked myself, James, you were never like this. What happened? 
I could only point back to the Bible and uh, the transformation that had taken place when you allow the Spirit of God to work on you. So mine has been emotional. I probably wouldn't have been able to stand here. Some years back, I was a very timid person. It <laughs> has really worked on me. And here I am, even being a country leader. Thank God. <laughs> uh, I can say emotional. Yeah. Wow. That's a very good one. That's a very good one. I didn't see salvation as being a healing process, but sure it is. Sure it is. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, Mr. Yemi, please go ahead and answer the question. In what way have you experienced healing? You're muted, sir. You're talking. You're muted. Oh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So personally, just like um, James just explained, you know, there know there are three parts to that to 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 our humanity uh, that forms a man that God created, which is the spirit, soul, and the physical body. And the three parts was infested. When I mean infested, that means it was corrupt and it's, it's corrupt. The, the diseases upon a person's body is the is the is the uh, manifestation of the corruption that is in the flesh and that start from the spirit. So God has healed us by getting us born again and healing the spirit outside of us. But the soul can be sick, the spirit can be sick, the flesh can be sick. So something is producing something within the flesh, but the origin could be from anywhere. So the, the soul itself, the emotions, the will, the, the intellect, the mind that comprises the soul. If the soul is sick, the expression of what is in the soul is what will be what you a person will manifest in the flesh. So simply meaning, if I have a sickness of envy, anger, pride, or whatever it may be in the soul, it, it is the, everything that I make through my emotions will be through that sickness that is in my soul. Every decision that I make through my mind or every decision that I make through my will will manifest through that. So the spirit itself needs healing and in most cases is what is manifesting in the spirit that actually manifests in the flesh. So the Bible said a, a heart that is bitter, you know, can also manifest sickness in the bones and in the flesh. If you read the book of Proverbs. So it's, they're all intertwined and God had to deal with every single one of us. So I can tell you that in all aspects, I've had physical sickness on my body and I've been able to stand against it uh, through the word of God, standing by faith in what God has said. And I've lived in Nigeria since 2008 to date. I've never taken uh, mal malaria tablets. And you can know that that is somebody working in divine health. Because in Africa, for you not to use malaria tablets, something must be going on within your system. So I've never used it once. I've been there since. Mosquito beat me, yes, but I have to stand on the word of God. And in other areas that I've taken as come, I've been able to stand. But the standing is based on what you fed yourself with the word and understanding the constitution, which is the word of God, God's side to what you are going through. And that's what stands as the truth. So as a result of that, I'm able to stand, you know, it's, it's all about standing against all this attack that comes and standing your ground, which is what uh, our sister Mercy prayed for earlier in um, Ephesians chapter six. The old essence of a believer is to stand even when those things come and then resist them through the word. And then at, at, at the end, we get big. So I've expressed healing physically, emotionally and spiritually in all area of my life. And as such, I've been able, because it's not just forcing you to receive the healing. The main thing is actually to maintain consistency in living a divine health, you know, on earth, so that you're living sound health rather than being attacked, healed, attacked, healed. But yeah, that process do happen. But the main goal of each believer is to make sure that we get to that place whereby we stand in faith in the word and that word is working and keeping us 
save from sickness in our spirit, man, soul, and physical body. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. And that is so very true. Medical science has linked um, some of these emotional issues to ulcer and some forms of um, cancer. And sure, all those emotional depression and the rest can actually cause physical and body um, sickness. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing. All right. Um, Dr. Michael has been able to join us is experiencing a bit of a network issue. Like Mr. Damola would always say, he's always the man, the man on the move. All right, sir. <laughs> Welcome to the meeting and thank you for joining us. Okay. Um, thank you the very question much. Is, yeah, thank you. The question is, in what way have you experienced healing? In what way have you experienced healing? All right, thank you very much, Dr. Victoria, and thank you, uh, Brother Yemi. And also, Brother James, I was just listening to your message. It was quite very powerful. Uh, but healing, you know, um, my first experience, personal experience with healing was when I was about nine years, when I had a terrible uh, stomach issue. In fact, uh, I don't know, my dad is a surgeon, so actually he was preparing me to take me to the hospital for surgery because he was suspecting appendicitis. But I had an uncle who was a pastor who apparently just came walking to the house and I said, no, Michael, let me pray. Prayed for me. I don't know where the pain left. I mean, it just left my body and I started laughing. I mean, that was my first experience with divine healing. So from then, I've really been trusting a lot for when it comes to matters of healing. I mean, my area and specialty in medicine has taught me people with minor headache. I've seen people who just went to bed, complained to their wife of minor headache. They never woke up. I've seen a young, healthy man who was praying to go to college, go to bed, doesn't wake up. We've seen, I've seen so many cases. I've seen active people playing soccer. In the middle of the soccer game, they collapse. We can't revive them. They die. So what makes us so special that we get headache? We take paracetamol, the following morning it's all gone. We don't even remember. So there's some divine power that's working. And I believe that it's, it's nothing but God. And um, since we just entered this month of healing, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I'm going through a series of uh, uh, spiritual challenges with my, my myself, my family, and also my staff. And I want to share one testimony with you. Um, just to encourage you, uh, one of my uh, shop attendants was practically electrocuted last week. In fact, tomorrow will be two weeks. Practically went off. I mean, pauseless for over 15 minutes by the grace of God. I mean, and by prayer. I mean, this girl is up and running. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nothing to us. I mean, we did a scan, CT scan, everything. All the brain is intact, scalp, everything is intact her neck, everything intact. So, I mean, it's just a miracle. So, I mean, this is a practical miracle that I have experienced just in two weeks. So, God day, a miracle day and healing day. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, that reminds me, Ghanaians, they also speak pidgin, God day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only Kenyans who don't speak pidgin. I spoke pidgin wants to Mr. James, he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, oh, they don't speak Pigeon. Maybe to a Ghanaian, he should understand me. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. We thank God for all that healing power. Okay. Let's take our next question. I'm not sure Mr. Uh, Damola is able to join yet, and so we'll keep going. All right. The next question is, has someone else received healing through you? Uh, have you been used as a vessel to maybe pray on for someone and that person received healing? Kindly share with us. All right, let's start with Mr. Mr. Yemi, your video is um okay, it's sort of static. I'm believing you don't have any network issue. All right, so let's start with you. Has someone else received healing through you? Yeah, by the grace of God. Um um yes i have an opportunity to pray for a few people um that god has brought my way um 
and being effective in that area as well. Uh, after all these years of um, learning, putting what you've learned to practice, it's actually the commission that God has given us. So yes, um, we've, we had a team and we still have the team whereby we focus on interceding for people in prayer, people who are sick, people who need help or deliverance uh, sometimes because the healing could be, the sickness could be even just uh, oppression of, of, of Satan, of demons that's causing sickness in somebody's body. And it could either be the attack that has been, it could also be one's mistake whereby you've abused your body and as a result of the abuse, you've caused sickness in the system. Um, I mean, for I can use myself as an example. I used to drink a lot of Coke and a lot of sugary thing. I used to drink a lot of coffee with like four sugars every day and drink, you know, gallons of Coke during the day. Coke was my water. I never drank anything else. But the effect of that is that I keep myself with diabetes, you know, begin to shut my system down, you know. And it, it, it got so serious that even the old family asked me that, oh, this guy, I started losing weight seriously. I dropped in size from size 40, I was down to size like 30 within the space of two, two weeks or thereabout. So the thing that taking a full blown effect within my system. Um, but it just to bring me back to, so I let me use myself as the example for the healing, uh, uh, rather than I think it will be able to, I'll be able to explain that further more than other people. But I had to, first of all, repent of my uh, idiocy, a repent of my stupidity. Because God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So now begin to now engage the word of God to address that issue. And it took time. Um, I know there's a next question after that, so I, I'm not going to fully, uh, I'll probably complete the testimony on the next question four, because he says that we have ever taken uh, medicine uh, because of particular healing. So I'll, I'll finish the, but yes, I've been attacked and I've been healed from the attack. Uh, it's been serious and severe, but, but the faith in the word, and because I've fed myself for decades, I've, I've lived in the word of God for decades, I'm entrenched in that word, that my first reaction to anything is the word. So the word became my, my, my tablet. So like doctor would say, take two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening. So I'll take a word in the morning, word in the afternoon, word in the day. that was my tablet. You know, and understanding the word that by your, by, by your tongue, you'll be able to frame and understanding the will of God that healing is for me. So I was able to tap into that. And then what happens, you engage the power of your Holy Spirit to now manifest the healing within the system which is the operation of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit only manifests when you release the mind of God through his word. It will never manifest any other way. So when it, when it was hovering in Genesis, God had to speak and that manifested that word, but it was there. So knowing the word of God helped and speaking it out, deliberately speaking it out, you know, not looking at the symptoms or the, or the circumstances, Overlook it and put it to us and address it through the word. What got the Holy Spirit to manifest the healing in my sister and then creative miracle that to be done, you know. Because when you when you destroy your liver and your kidney, only creative miracle can bring it back to life and nothing else. So that's my own personal healing, which I'll complete on the second question, on the next question. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Mr. James, you want to add to this? You want to contribute to this, rather? I'll Has continue. someone received healing through you? I'll Doesn't have to be health healing, could be emotional, could be business wise. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for expanding it. Yeah, it was really narrow. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I'll add on what Yemi, brother Yemi, has just said, and I'd say the grace of God. Uh, before being born again, I think I went through some issues. And um, I lost loved ones uh, who were sick. And uh, we thought they could pull through the hospital, but they all passed on. 
and there were young ones. And I kept on asking myself, what happened? So when I got born again, my biggest desire was to be like Jesus because he went all around healing. And I joined the ministry of, uh, we call it visitation in my church, whereby we used to go to hospitals and uh, there I would exercise what Christ did. And I would just walk in the woods and uh, pray for people. Just request them for me to uh, request them for permission to pray for them, and if they agree, I pray. And coming the next week, I would find people up and say, "You know, you came and you prayed for us," and things happened. I can't say there was faith and there was all these things. I just obeyed the word. But uh, you go out there and just demonstrate it, uh, and don't look at the disease. Don't expect maybe the healing to happen right there and then. And uh, I built my faith on that. I built it. And um, I'll give an example now. I normally hold um, uh, a fellowship in my house. And there's this brother that uh, had a wound in his hand. And he had tried to use all the antibiotics, and it, it, they were not working. In fact, it oh. was so festering that uh, he had to always put on long sleeve shirts so that um, it can block people from seeing the the oozing of. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, he came to me and told me, my brother, this is what I'm facing, and I. Use the Bible. We yeah, like using the Bible. What Christ, you know, Christ used to address the 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 disease like a like any human being. So I told him, uh, by by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And uh, God gave me a prophetic instruction whereby He told me, I told him, now do this. Uh, we prayed about the wound, and I told him. Do this. By his stripes, you are healed. Do you believe that? And he said, I believe. And I told him, now what we'll do, because it was on the cross that he did all these things. Uh, that was the prophetic instruction that I'm giving. Why don't we be taking Holy Communion on a daily basis? Because it says, do this as often as in remembrance of me, of what Christ had done on the cross. And what did Christ do on the cross? He was beaten, and through his wounds, we were healed. Uh, lo and behold, three months down the line, the wound was completely healed. Wow. Super healed. And um, what did I do? Did I feel something that uh, I can say I shivered, and uh, the Holy Spirit came, and I... The wound got healed. No, I just dem I just demonstrated what Christ does in the Bible by faith and taking the word of God, just the way Amy has been saying, taking the word of God and applying it, saying, by the stripes of Jesus, you are here. And it happened. So wow. there are various others that I think will pick it up. As I think uh, there is a question there on number eight. Okay. The emotional ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing. I like that. That's the rema there. You caught the rema and you walked with it. And that reminds me, you sharing about your testimony of when you newly got born again, going to the hospitals to pray for the sick. There's a popular man of God in Nigeria that said when he newly gave his life to Christ and he learned that Jesus raised the dead, he would go to houses and ask, do you have any dead body here? Because he wanted to raise the dead like Jesus. All right. And so we give God all the glory for all the good works that he's um, doing through you. All right, Mr. Michael, sir. Dr. Michael, you want, want to share on that too? Has yes. someone received healing through you? Please go ahead, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, very inspired about uh, the testimony of uh, Brother Jameson also uh, my brother Yemi 
Uh, personally, I'm going through it now. Uh, surprisingly, this whole last two weeks has been a really challenging uh, period in uh, my life, uh, especially the life of my staff. My wife was actually admitted in the hospital for almost a week. Uh, as we speak, one of my managers is in the hospital. I'm standing at the premier hospital in Ghana now, the Polibu Teaching Hospital, here to see her. Um, I prayed with her just before. Before she was admitted, she was having a lot of uh, loose stool, uh, run about seven times. So I had the communion wine there, which I prayed over it and gave her a sip. Immediately she took the communion wine. She told me that ever since she took the communion wine, that's about three days ago, the running stopped. And now we are dealing with another matter. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yes, I've been intentionally brought her to the uh, general hospital here just for her to be admitted to get herself rested up and um, because she, she just overworked herself. So this uh, evening, the whole the entire team is at the hospital visiting her and I'm here to visit her too. So God is healing them. I mean, they, God healed and saved my one of the staff from death. The other one now, although in the hospital, I mean, we've checked that everything is in good shape. But I just asked the doctors just to keep her at least for a few days so she can regain her strength back. So things are really working. And this is the testimony I can share with you that in the last one, two weeks, I mean, I've been dealing with three close by family members who are really sick and God has totally healed them. Oh, yeah. wow. Thank That's you. That's good to hear. Give God glory for all the healing. Hallelujah to his name. All right, Mr. Yemi, are you there, sir? So I am, yeah. Okay, yes, sir. You said you, you have an answer for the next question. That's why I'm coming to you first. So have you ever oh. had to resolve to taking white medicine because a particular healing you were expecting didn't happen? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, what I always say to people and then uh, advise is to whatever you need to do while you build your faith. You know, so... Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If your faith is not strong enough, don't go and try to say you want to do something because somebody, another brother is doing it. So do whatever you need to but build your faith because everything the kingdom is by faith. So yes, I've had to take medicine while I was building my faith to get my faith to address the issue that I was faced with. And in fact, the reason the medicine, I can remember the medicine I ever took medicine was because the pressure came from everybody all over my family, both my in-laws and my father's side, my mother, everybody that know you have to. Um, so just to appease everybody and make everybody okay, I said, okay. But yes, about new, you know, the most important thing is to back what you're doing up by faith. And the best drug you can ever take is the Holy Communion. I'm telling you, honest truth. And that's what Brother Michael just, just, just said, and even Brother James said it. The best drug you can take is your Holy Communion, but take it. But some people's faith are not there yet. And the scripture allows it, you know, it says, you know, if you, if you know that your brother is going to fall into sin, if you have faith to eat, Food has been offered to idols, and you know that your brothers will eat it, and it will cause their conscience to be to be weakened, and they will be emboldened to eat it. They then you've offended your brother by not walking in love. So just to use that to explain my point that yes, if but the essence of thing is growth in the kingdom that will keep growing our faith, whereby those things are not become things of the past, where your faith can stand you and take you through any issues of life that you're faced with. And a faith, Holy Spirit work with faith and, and, and faith filled world. The word of God that's released through faith is so powerful that the Holy Spirit acts upon that word. And that's how they, they work. They are team. They work as a team. You know, when you release the word with faith, the Holy Spirit moves on it. And that's when it moves. It moves on the word of God and it brings it back to pass. He moved on that anointing. That's why it stopped immediately when Brother Michael, you know, gave the 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 prescription of the of the of the blood of Jesus to to, to 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 solve that problem. So we were seeing it work, and I'm happy what we what I'm hearing this month that this month of divine healing 
God is really testing. Is 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 devil is testing us on all, all grounds, and we're able, and we're proving that yes, it works, and the power of God works. So to me, it's a it's a blessing. So yes, uh, but why we build our faith to make sure that um, because the thing with medicine is also is destroying your liver. Whatever medicine they give you is destroyed. All the effects is on the liver. The liver is one, you know, getting rid of the poison from those toxins. So after a while, you damage the liver, destroy the liver, then the death you are running away from. Eventually, just in future, people are just trying their best. You know, the white people are trying their best to keep us alive. But the best that God has given us is his power. That we walk by faith and get divine, divinely healed. So that our, our liver is still intact, our kidney is still intact. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, sir, uh, for so that candid answer. Yes, yeah, Victoria, while yes. you are here, I just uh, got to see my daughter. So if uh, we can jointly pray for her before she moves back to her hospital bed, I'll be very excited. Yeah. Okay, sir. All right, sir. When you are in there, you let us know. Let's take a few more questions and then we do the prayer yeah, she, she, she's before here. we take. Oh, okay. Okay, All right. sir. It's fine. Yeah, we are praying for you. All right, sir. Uh, Mr. Yemis, are you there? Yes. Please, sir, lead the prayer. Um, so please, as we all um, uh, gather now, let's just stretch our hands uh, as a point of contact. Um, and let's pray and release through our spirit. Brother Mike, we pray Amen. right now Amen. from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet for the power of God to fall Amen. upon us right now in the yes. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Mike, I want you to what, yes, what 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 is she finding her to do? I want it, I want her to do it now, now, now. Anything she can't do that but is impossible to do. I want her to do it now. What she finding her to do, let her do it now. I want her to begin. When she to walks at just a little distance, now. she gets very tired. Move. Yes, let her move, begin move, to walk move, around. Move, move. Begin to walk around. The power of God is upon us. It's going to start manifesting in that physical body. In Jesus' name, I rebuke every spirit of madness. In Jesus' name, I command it to lose your hold over that body, over our legs, over our mind. In Jesus' name, I command the power of God over those legs, over those hands, over our body. In Jesus' name, let the power of healing begin to manifest in that physical body. Let us keep walking around, keep walking around, keep walking around. Not to stand. May I cast that out? I speak straight <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Brother Mike, tell her to keep walking around, not to stop. Tell her to keep walking around. Sure. All right, I my back. Well. I All right, we'll do it. Yeah, I dislocated my back a few weeks, a few months ago, and my back pulled out the lower back, and I tore my own muscle from the back, trying to lift something that was extremely heavy. Mm. But I, I did not stop this. Mm. Pain was excruciating. As I prayed like this, I was mm. walking around mm. for five days. My whole body automatically, divinely, I woke up the next day completely healed. Mm. Completely healed. Tell her not to stop. Mm. To begin to heal. The power is working in our okay. physical body. Not to ever mm. stop. Keep taking that Man. step after and one Man. another. Taking that step and keep walking yeah. around. As we are well. ministering, All right. continue. All right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand is pleasures forevermore. So the presence of God is here, and so there is joy with us and healing also. Thank you so much, sir, for leading that prayer. And thank you, Mr. Michael. Okay. Mr. James, your um, video is froze, frozen. I don't know. Is it from my end? Everyone seems to be frozen. It's from your end. I think so. Oh, I see. On the end. Yeah. <laughs> I see. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. All right. I don't know each uh, of the discussion we are having today is uh, remind taking me down memory lane, just reminding me of some things. When um, Mr. Yemi was, was sharing about um, taking medicine and taking while building your faith in prayer. As a teenager, we used to go out for evangelism. And so we were trying to preach to this old woman who used to take snuff. And so we meet her like, Grandma, stop taking snuff. She said, no, she can't stop that. God created snuff. That's on a lighter note. But on a serious note, it's God that gave these doctors the wisdom to handle certain situations. And so there is room for medicine and there is also both of them, like Mr. Yemi said, they walk hand in hand to bring about the purpose of God. And okay, that will bring me to the next question. The next question. All right. Um, Mr. James, what would you say is the balance between healing and modern modern medicine? The balance between healing and modern medicine. Uh, I have just got only one word. Persistency. And uh, maybe I'll elaborate on it a little bit. Balance between healing and modern medicine. And uh, I'll pick my examples from okay. Christ. I'll pick my example from the Bible and how Christ uh, used to heal. Uh, every healing that Christ did, if you check, it was a persistent Medi a, med a persistent disease 
or an infirmity, something that was very, very persistent. So uh, I'll say this, that when something is persistent, you, I, okay, this is what I normally do. When something is persistent, I normally ask somebody, uh, for how long has this continued? And if they tell me that, you see, I've been having migraines, I've been, every time I take medicine, and I'll take it as a ritual, that this one needs to be handled far more than medicine. But if it's normal headaches, probably you just had a headache because you are walking in the sun for a very long time, normal dehydration, you just need water to drink, uh, medicine there. But if it crosses the line, and now we are on the things like in the Bible, the issue of blood. This woman was, was having the issue of blood for almost 12 years. Now there, there you, it, it has crossed the line to the place of spiritual intervention. And what does the Bible say? In the book of James, it gives guidance. And it says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders. The Bible has given us a, a principle, a way of handling this type of diseases. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders. Let them pray for him. And it makes, uh, he, the Bible equalizes everything by even comparing us to Elijah. Elijah was just a man like us. So you don't go there with any inferiority complex. You're just saying, I'm carrying God. This is what the word of God says. Bring the person and do what you have to do. In regard to healing, is Jehovah Rapha. You are not the healer. He is the one who calls himself the healer. You is to present yourself and to administer the word of God and speak that word of God to the deceased. Then Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, the healer, takes over. So you don't beat yourself. <laughs> you don't beat yourself asking yourself, uh, this person has not yet gotten healed in two days time, in three days time. No, it's not your job. You do your part and God <laughs> will honor you. We're just being faithful. So it all Depends. When you say balance of healing and modern medicine, there's a thin line, but once it crosses, because even if you look at the Bible, we don't see, uh, it was only the persistent diseases that people came to Christ. It could be probably an epilepsy, something that was almost bordering on incurability, something that was not incurable, that Christ came and sorted. It could be a deformation. But Christ came and sorted. But things like um, normal cold, <laughs> it's not even recorded in the Bible. So that's how we strike the balance. And everything done just the way Brother Yemi has said, through faith. Through faith. As you take the medicine, take it by faith that it is God <laughs> that, who made all these things, even the medicine itself. Just take it by faith. If the men of God come to you, it just requires faith. It's faith in God. So in everything that we do, let's have faith. Let's have faith. Let's not All doubt. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for that clarity. All right. Um, at this juncture, I would like to call in a pharmacist. Let her share with us um, what in the medical line what the balance would be between medicine and um, healing. All right, Mr. Yemi is raising his hand. Okay, sir, please. Go ahead, sir. No, that's good. Please let her go ahead here. Okay. All right, for my sister, I'm just like, are you there, please? For my sister, Kudo, are you still with us? I'm, I'm not sure she's here. Seems we seem to have um some serious internet issue. 
in the whole of Africa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's affecting people in the UK too, because Mr. Yemi's internet somehow was unstable at some point. <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to implicate you, sir. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. She, yeah, she's not here. Can't see her in the meeting. Perhaps she'll join us yeah. again. I guess we lost her due to internet issue. All right, Dr. Michael, let's come to you. What is the balance between medicine, white medicine, and um, healing, sir? I think there is a... Uh, you cannot take miraculous healing from orthodox medicine i mean if you read all the medical books they will let you know that doctors really do not heal you know it's god who heals doctors will prescribe medications for you just to try to help cure something but the healing itself comes from a supernatural force if you are sick doctors can give you all the medicines in the world the best medicines in the world but if <laughs> if, if the heal is not given from above, those medicines will not work. So when it comes to healing, I mean, it's only come from above. And I think doctors and everyone should know that, you know. So one of my doctors, uh, his motto is, we medicate, God heals. And it's true. Doctors can only medicate, try to find cure. But even the healing, total healing comes from the Lord. So there's a clear dichotomy between divine healing and also medical aspect of trying to uh, you know find medication for patients to you know thinking that it will work for them and they pray that it works yeah all right thank you so much sir okay sorry mr yemi before i'll come to you i think i would like to call on um, mrs amy i'm always careful while calling the surname because ku actually means different things in Yoruba, so I'm not sure which one I'll be calling. So let me just call her Mrs. Amy. All right, ma, please um, would like your contribution here on the balance between healing and modern medicine. If you can speak up, ma, please, you take the question. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Victoria. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope I'm coming out across click. Can you hear me? Yeah. Properly? But uh, if you can turn it up a bit okay. so that the volume would be a bit louder. Okay. Um, is it better now? Yes, it's getting better. All right, I'll need others to answer so that I'll be sure it's not just from my okay. end, please. All okay. right, okay. go ahead. Okay. Um, I can hear you. Yeah, I think it was uh, Dr. Michael who spoke just before me and you know I, I would actually just agree with that and that's what I was thinking too because I think what happens is the, uh, God has different many ways of healing right so even when we observe the different cases that come to Jesus there were different things he would ask people to do um, and it would translate to healing right not even just Jesus you know the prophets there were different things that would be the instruction that would be given out so when it comes to the balance between um, you know, would I say modern medicine and um, divine healing? I think it just comes back down to revelation, right? My personal belief, and you know, I think a lot of people agree with this, is that people can only do the best that they can. Anything that we receive in the in the way of healing will come from God. So whether that comes through medicine or that comes through a miracle, and so it's down to understanding the channel through which God is desiring to heal in that specific situation um so god can choose to heal a person through the channel of medicine right because there's also healing that comes through those through that pathway because there are certain people who will take the same medication everybody else is taking and will still die from the same ailment um and then we see other people take that same medicine and they are fine before they even complete the dose right so i think it comes down to revelation so when we talk about the balance, I think it, it, revelation comes into play there, right? Um, and your faith also does, you know, become a very important factor in understanding which channel um, God desires to heal through, whether through the divine channel of healing or, you know, or, or through medicine. I, I think it really comes down to that. So as, you know, people who, would I say, stand in the place of ministers, um, if we're going to, you know, would I say minister healing to people, we also must understand you know, what the heart of God is for that situation. Because I think, 
you know, one of the things that I've heard a lot of people in the body is when certain people are passing through certain illnesses and then someone comes to pray for them and says they should stop taking their medicine and you know they are deteriorating and the person is like don't take it don't take it if you take it it means you don't have faith and then they die right um and then the the, the pastor is like well they didn't have faith that's why they died well that's not always the case so i think when it comes to that balance it all goes back to to, to understanding what god's heart is in that specific matter because there will be different ways that he seeks to heal and if he chooses to heal through a, a, a divine channel through a miracle through an instant healing you know it's all up to god and if he chooses to heal that person through the pathway of of medicine um it's up to him as well another you know solid example like that is you know uh, like cancer patients right they're cancer patients will go through the same uh treatments that other people are put on and they get to the end and they're fine and you know it never comes back and they're okay but there are some people who get put on the same treatment course and just a few weeks into it they just have such a sharp decline and they pass away you know so it, it all comes you know like i said earlier down to the channel through which God seeks to heal. And sometimes even as a minister, um, the, 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 what I said, the requirement or the um, assignment for us is to be that in tune with the Holy Spirit that we understand what his prescription is in a certain matter, uh, matter so that we're not telling people to do certain things because that's what we feel or that's what we would like to see um, as the channel through which they are healed versus how God is actually instructing their healing to happen. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's that's really very key. That's really very key. Because when you read through the Bible, there was during the war that the Israelites fought with the other nations, there are some places you'd see, say, see God tell them, just sing. Just sing and play your instruments. And then they gain the victory. Some other places, okay, attack them from the front or attack them from the middle or attack them from the back. So it depends on the instrument that God is giving you. Is it asking you to be quiet during the war? Or no, it's it sort of sounds weird. I'm going to face someone with an AK-47 and they are telling me just sing and clap your hands and everything would be fine. But he is God and when he gives the direction, he has taken care of the rest. All right, thank you so much, ma'am. That's uh, That was very good. Okay, and so um, looking at time, we have to move. All right, so let's go to the next question. Mr. Yemisa, um, what other healing experience would you like to share? I think you you said you had an answer for this. Hello, Mr. Yemi, are you there? Are you okay, muted? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah sorry. All um, right, sir. Um, healing experience, uh, personal experiences, or just them, um, what other healing experience would you like to share? Or any experience, right? Dig it out from Is your archive. Right? Personal, with okay, other okay. people. Yes, sir. Um, okay, let me put it this way, because the, 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 the healer and the power to heal is the Holy Ghost and is in and every one of us. Now, is how you release him. God said he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that is within you. So it's inside of you. So how do I release this power to address issues that I'm faced with? It's really the teaching that we need to know how to address the powers in us. So how do I release this power in order that this power could function? I think we. I think this 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 is more. I'm not sure if it's this month, beginning of this month. My three year daughter woke up. My wife screamed from downstairs that oh, come upstairs, something wrong. I found her on the floor. She's flat on the floor, lifeless, and you know, shaking and lifeless. And there are situations whereby, if your faith is not built, that's why I'm saying every believer walk on your faith. There's some situations. By the time you say you rush to the hospital, it's too late. And that was the situation we we're faced with. For once, my wife and I, she didn't even tell me, let's go to the hospital. We sat there and faced face the matter. And we blast for two and a half in tongues, begin to rebuke every power, any, every issue that wants to happen. 
you need two and a half hours. My daughter could not walk. She's not going to put her on the floor by feet, move, walk. She was falling down, falling down. No strength in her body, in her legs. No life. It was almost as if up there, you can see that this girl is going to pass on. And we're standing there, rebuking death, rebuking every power of darkness, and commanding her, putting her on the floor, walk. She fall down, put her on the floor, walk. She fall down, put her on the floor, walk. I kept on doing that for two and a half hours. <laughs> the next minute, she walked, put her on the bed, lay my hand on her. She walked out. She wouldn't like to walk. She came back to life. She could see what's going on. She said, yes, I put her on the floor. She walked around. You know, I went to give her a bath. So we're there for three and a half hours. From 8.30 a.m., when we're supposed to be out, I was fully dressed to go out. I was fully dressed to go to the office till 12 o'clock. There was no time. We both knew it. That if this is not done now, that's it. You know, it's a big, big different topic, a different story. And this is what I'm saying as believers. There's some things in life that you have to face. And the Bible says, after you've done all to stand, stand therefore. So Jesus also said, if the enemy compels you to go one mile, he said, you say to him, no, we're going two miles. So he's saying that we present to be more dogged than even the devil. If the devil say we're ready to pray for 10, 48 hours. God, this is a life and death matter. And this is your own blood, your, your baby. So there are please. If you, if you don't pray, the thing does not grieve you. That's what I keep saying to people. When somebody grieves, you say, I can't do one hour prayer. I'm just tired. Ah, it's too stressful. One hour, ah, no, no, no. When the thing hits you, you realize that when they say, we've been praying for three hours, you say, I know you're joking. Or you've been praying for three days. You know, but this is the reality that devil is there. God has already said it to us. He said the devil goes to and fro, looking for whom he may devour. He's there. We can't take him out of this system that we're in. So we must know how to engage the power of the Holy Ghost and the faith of God to overcome situations of life. Now, if I, if this time around, God says, okay, do something like this, and I do it according to that, because he knows my faith is not built to that level yet, so help me. And God can also help us, which he does, to say, oh, go this direction, go this direction. But the bottom line is, because we know the devil exists and God is not ready to move him out of this equation. As long as you're in this world, the Bible says you have tribulation. We can't escape it. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So there's a place whereby we must make sure that we develop ourselves to a place whereby we can stand and have others to stand with us in prayer. Whereby to defeat these evil, evil, evil powers. Because they will always be there. You know, one victory after another, one attack after another. So I'm um, getting ready for the next one that will come because I can't say I'm, I'm going to be attack free. That means I'm telling God that you kill me and take me out of this world. That's the only way I'll be free of any attack on Satan, as long as one is in this world. So the experiences of life that, that I'm sharing with you are the real experiences. I'm sharing things that's close to me. So it's, it's, it's able, because I'm speaking from my point of view, you know, to explain to everybody who is listening. Though there are other people that pray for they receive healing, but when is my own? You guys can see my heart and you can understand that. Oh, okay, these are the reality of what I face. Could it be is it my wife that attack, or could it be my family member, my mom? You know that I had to go and pray for them. But it, the whole idea is, you resist him in faith and stand your ground. It's, it's, I've noticed some way Satan. He knows the threshold of people. He knows if a man. If you put pressure on him and he can stay for one hour, you will yield after an hour. So he will get that beating for one hour. And then eventually, Christian who doesn't know, will just turn and say, I'm tired, pray for one hour. Nothing happened. But it's a place of consistency where you begin to, he knows that this guy ain't going to stop. You know, and he, ha he has to have that record about you, really. And that's the best yeah. thing to share, too. That devil has a record about that. Don't go to this and sister Victoria. She will not stop praying until she will batter us even more than what we want to do to her. You know, so the, the experiences is, the reality is we can't run away from what God has put us. And that's why he has given us the most powerful person who's called the Holy Spirit, who carries the power of God that will be able to combat every attack of Satan. He's more powerful than him, you know, so to be able to address every, to destroy the works of darkness. So that's just uh, my little experience I want to share with you. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Thank you so much, sir. Like someone I know would always say, if you are still speaking English, the matter never stops. 
when something happens to you and in the place of prayer you are still speaking English, the matter has not yet entered you. So when it enters you, your language will change. All right, thank you so much. Sir. Okay, Mr. James, let's take the same question, answer the same question. What other experiences would you like to share? Healing experiences. You also said you had an answer for this. Uh, so examples of healing experiences. Uh, let me first uh, expound on also uh, what my brother Yemi has said, and uh, I'll go further and say uh, preparation is the best defense. Preparation is the best defense. When you are in the barracks of prayer, preparing, exercising, doing mock fights and everything, because you never know. The, the enemy is walking about. You never know when he'll strike. So the only thing that will really assist you is how prepared have you been in the secret place? How prepared have you been? So that when he shows up, he will take you by surprise. You are fit. You can go with him toe to toe. If it's two hours, the way my brother is saying, we can go toe to toe. Eh? Yeah. You, you have your armory. <laughs> The beam. You've got the missiles, you've got the AK-47, uh, you've got the tanks to blast off. And those are speaking in tanks now. When Brother Damola says you blast, you've got all these things blasting in you. They won't even come near you. But the enemy is not stupid also. He knows a weak fella. He knows a weak fella. So at the end of the day, it's building yourself up. And you cannot build yourself up by relying on a person, a man of God. When the enemy strikes, the man of God is not around. What will you do? So just to expound on what my brother Emiya said, and now to give my example. Uh, my second example is um, I was once called by a friend of mine a prayer meeting, and he told me he had an issue with his wife. The wife um, was sort of going mad. So he called us and told us, uh, uh, how do you handle this one? Because the wife would uh, stand up and even start burning himself on the hot stoves and all those things. So uh, I told him, let's pray. And during the prayer time with him personally, I told him, I feel the Holy Spirit telling me that we take a three day prayer and fasting. And I told him, let's all pray and let's pray for three days, no water, no nothing. And then we went to the Spirit. And uh, the day came and I told him, let's go. And let's go to the house. We enter the house. The, Calm uh, when we entered the house, and uh, the husband explained the problem. And I told him, Let's now pray. When we started to pray, he started manifesting. He started changing his face and doing all sorts of funny things. <laughs> but we were not cowed by her face eh? because she was trying to sometimes imitating a lion and all those things, we were not cowed. We attacked the spirit behind the woman and attacked for almost an hour or two because we were around two or three people. So there's another principle, just carry along two people or three. And we attacked and we attacked and we attacked until the spirit left and she fell down and came back to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, we prayed with her, we sealed her. And we told her now, give your life to Christ. She gave her life to Christ. And because she was also, also very disobedient to the husband, she never used to like going to church. There was a complete turnaround. And that she leaves the husband in the house, rushing to church every day on Sunday. And we give glory to God. So sometimes I can say, yeah, there'll be instructions. There'll be prophetic instructions. 
you will be given a situation and be told, this is what's happening. And as you pray before you go, God will guide you on what to do. Just like uh, what Halita was praying today with Joshua, God will give guidance on what to do. So that's my second. I can add a third one. Um, there was a woman who was not giving birth. And that was a challenge. She wasn't giving birth. And she had tried everything. She had gone to Sweden and all those things of uh, trying to do things artificially. And uh, she was not a strong believer. So her sister called us and told us that uh, we need to pray. She's a very wealthy woman. We kept on going to our house to pray every day and nothing was happening. So I think after some time, uh, I told her sister that let's do it one more time. And the day we went to do it one more time, uh, the lady decided not to come for the prayers. She said she's tired. <laughs> and I stood up and I told the sister, we are not going to pray until she comes here. So she ended up coming at around midnight and we prayed until morning. And we left the house. We went. And then um, three, four, five months passed down the line. Then we are told that she's pregnant. Today she's wow. got a big son, six years. I didn't feel anything. I just followed the instruction. Mm -hmm. Go there, pray. And up today, she still remembers that it's when I called her. I forced, literally forced her to come to the prayer. The way we force people to come to EAC prayer meetings, <laughs> you never know. That's where a breakthrough can be. So to date, she's a mother, a six-year-old wow. child. Yes. Wow. We give Amen. God all the glory. Amen. Thank we you so much, sir, for sharing. It's been <laughs> such a wonderful time. It's been such a wonderful time. And like all our leaders who have spoken have said, hear from God. Act based on instructions. Don't say Jesus walked on water and then you'd go to um, to the Atlantic Ocean and want to walk on the water when God has not told you to walk on the Atlantic Ocean. Hear from God. All right. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing. Okay. At this juncture, Mr. Damola, sir, are you there? You'd help us. We are out of time. And so let's go to the last question and see how we can end the meeting. Mr. Damolasa, you want to add bits and pieces here? And then what advice can you give someone trusting God for healing before we call it a day for this meeting? Are you there, sir, Mr. Damola? Hello, sir, Mr. Damola. Oh, oh. I guess network issue. All right. Okay, sir. Uh, Mr. Yemi and Mr. James, in just one minute, I'll be in one word, what advice would you have for someone trusting God for healing? We are actually out of time. Mr. Yemi, let's take your answer first. Um, just like I said earlier, my one and only advice is please build your faith. Build your faith. Um, faith is like a muscle. Um, I used to do uh, gym a lot, go to the gym, and it takes years to develop muscles, years and years. Faith is a muscle that each believer must develop. Every day you're feeding on, your, on the world and you're building your faith too. What your practice, faith is built through practice. You know, if you have headache, use your faith. If somebody has headache, pray for them and release faith. Tiny, 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 and build it to a capacity that as long as devil will come one way you're ready, there's something to draw from. You know, there's something to draw from you. There's capacity you stored within that when it comes, you begin to draw. And 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 that's 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 what happened to us. You know, if we didn't store anything, we'd be panicking, parrying, complaining, crying, murmuring, say, God, where are you help us? This is that we didn't have time for that. We begin to draw from the capacity of resources. My wife dropped at least minimum of 50 scriptures that was flowing out of her. Minimum. 
I could not count after 50. Uh, that's that. I was rebuking. We had something to draw from because we had already fed our spirit man with so much faith for years. So when that issue came, we were able to address it. The girl is alive, she's strong, she's healthy, he went to the hospital, says everything is fine. But the issue is you must build your faith because we will have issues in life. If you're not ready, a lot of Christians are dying because they don't have they have not built enough capacity to address the issue. And they have left issue undone for years where you where you've you've circumvented issue, you have you not know, exercised the faith. Because like I said, faith is a muscle when you're building your physical body. You exercise it and build it to a capacity whereby when issue comes, you're able to address it. You know, and that issue doesn't take us out. So we can take that issue out and establish the gov government and the will of God, which is what God has established us to do on earth. We are ambassador on earth to establish the government and the will of God on earth. Not for devil to run us around, but for us to run him out of town. And in that, we must build it through the capacity of faith. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, mustard seed is the smallest seed that you can, you can only see with your eyes unless you bring it close to your eyes. That's to say, if your faith is that tiny, you can move mountains. So it's addressing the issue of where we build the capacity of our faith through the grace and through prayer and through practice. And that's the advice I can give everybody listening to me tonight. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Mr. James, what advice would you give, please? Uh, I'll, Psalm 103, verse 3. That says, let me start from verse 2 that says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. That's where the promise is. If you get to know the desire of God is to heal all your diseases. So anytime you're caught in a situation, the desire of God, we're not saying that diseases won't come, diseases will come. But what's God's desire? God's desire is to heal all your diseases. So cling on the promise, cling on the desire of God. God's desire is already there. Yeah, so I know when diseases come, they really knock off your faith. They can really punch your faith. But the desire of God in any situation, be it an incurable disease like cancer, HIV, it's God has the intention of healing you, all of those diseases. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank all you. right. Thank you so much. It's been such a great time, and I believe everyone that is here in this meeting has, has, taken, has learned a whole lot, and um, your faith has been increased, and um, you now know how to tackle that issue that has been harassing you, be it um, bodily healing, be it on your finance, or be it on your career. All right, thank you so much once again to um, you, Mr. Yemi, and Mr. James. Dr. Michael, perhaps you lost, your, you lost internet too. And um, Mr. Damola really apologizes. The internet service is quite very unstable because he's on transit and, uh, and so he couldn't give response when we needed him to and he couldn't join the meeting. All right, so thank you so much everyone for those who joined us for the first time today. I saw, um, okay, Shobola, sh Bola. Is it a missus, a mister? Thank you so much for joining today's meeting. We appreciate you for coming. And um, a brief announcement before we share the grace. Uh, the, cell, the Business Cell Fellowship had started last Friday. We are holding it two Fridays in a month, the first and the last Fridays in the month. And so if um, you do not have a location, kindly get in touch and um, with your address and I'll find the one that is nearest to you. Also in EIC, we do not take offerings, but uh, we welcome those who want to support the vision by um, giving some, uh, by partnering financially with the EIC vision. And after this, this meeting, I'm going to share that uh, financial partnership information on the groups. So if you want to make a partner with us financially, you go, it's on our website, you'd find any payment plan platform that is best for you to use. And um, also our 
ministry arms, the evangelical ministry arm and um, the kingdom financiers ministry arm is up and running to join any of these, get in touch and would um, add you to the group. And so you'd also join the meetings. All right, on this note, thank you so much everyone once again for joining. We'll see you on Wednesday for the prayer first meeting and next Friday for another prayer first meeting. All right, Mr. James, kindly say the closing prayer. Okay. And thank you also, Mr. James. Wonderful thank evening. And, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And then you might as well. Well done, Victoria. Thank you. I was you, blessed. Sir. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God. Let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the success of the meeting this evening. Lord, even as we yeah. part, oh Lord, we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that your gracious hand shall continue to rest upon us in the name of your Son, Jesus Amen. Christ. We pray, Amen. give us Amen. a good day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well right. done, Brother nice James. Everyone. Oh. Wonderful. Do you have a miracle night rest? Yes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Should you have any concern about healing? You need some. You need uh, any of the leaders to agree with you concerning any illness? Yes. Please do get in touch. This night you must receive your healing. Either the devil likes it or yes. Amen. So Amen. please get in touch if you need healing. You need one of the leaders to pray with you. I'm sure they would be willing to do so. For anybody in the family that needs to be prayed for in the EIC family, anybody in the extended family that they want us to pray for, we're, we're available. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.